Now, if you watched my last video, the one on the DVLA survey, and a whopping, well, more than 37,000 of you watched that video, obviously you thought it was worth watching, hopefully you enjoyed what you saw in there, and hopefully the majority of you, if not all of you, went over the DVLA website link and completed the survey. However, while I was on the internet researching that particular video, I did come up with a couple of other stories that have to be worth mentioning. Now, I didn't put them in that video because I didn't know how that video was going to uh, was going to go down. I didn't know that would be a popular video or not. But since it was such a popular video, I thought I'd make this one and get some more information out there to you. Information that I think you need to know. My name is Nige. This is Double Zero Garage, a channel all about my garage, my cars, your cars, and hopefully any automotive news I find on the internet that's not being reported by the mainstream media. Now, even though we've supposedly left the EU, according to the government, if you can believe that, there's still some EU laws, rules and regulations that are being put in place that will affect us or could affect us over here in the UK. Sweden, for one of them, uh, they're doing a proposal on end of life vehicles, which could lead to cars of a certain age or a certain condition being seized and sent for crushing or scrapping. Now, obviously, the proposal itself could wipe out the car hobby or the automotive hobby as we know it. Now, the main aim of the proposal is to introduce requirements for circularity throughout the entire lifetime of the vehicle, from design and manufacture to end-of-life management. Håkan Johansson, editor-in-chief of Wheels magazine, the leading Scandinavian magazine for American cars, who represents Moon Eyes Garage of Sweden and is one of Sweden's most respected figures in the car hobby, is worried. Peter Sunfeld, a motoring journalist, test driver and appraiser for the prestigious Bill Webb auctions, is also worried. Bosse, car doctor Anderson, a car builder and inspector for the Swedish Car Builders Association, and Jan Takt, an expert in vehicle regulations and standards at the Federation of Swedish Historic Vehicles, are both worried as well. Now, Jan Takt has said that the proposal states that a car should be kept in its original condition with absolutely no alterations at all. Now, to make that a little bit easier to understand, what it actually means is, if you have a 1927 Model T Ford and you paint it today in today's modern water-based paints, instead of the paint that would have been used back in 1927, which would have been a cellulose paint, then over in Sweden at least, the car will be no longer classed of having historical value and it will no longer be seen as being a historic car and being worthy of being on the road. It would have effectively be at the end of its life because you couldn't paint it in its original combination of cellulose paint instead of the water-based paint we have these days. Now, when these types of laws are put in place or these regulations come into force, there's always one official somewhere who will follow the law to the letter of the law. So as long as there's a law in place allowing cars to be seized, there'll be an official idiot somewhere that will follow the law and seize the vehicle. In one case, a 1971 International Harvester 1210 4x4 was stopped on import into Sweden due to the fact it was a non-running vehicle. The county administration deemed the vehicle to be classified as hazardous waste. This caused a battle that went on for five years alongside all the various legal costs involved in completing that battle. In another case, business owner Jan Carlson who imports American cars into Sweden for restoration for clients that he has, got a call from a customer's official regarding three cars, all from 1959, that were in containers. Now, on the phone call, he was asked if he had a permit to import hazardous waste. Obviously, he wasn't importing hazardous waste. He was just bringing in three vehicles that needed full restoration for clients of his business. When he told Customs this, they handed the whole all of the information over to the County Administrative Board for Western Gotland, where the head of the department and the environmental lawyer both said that the three vehicles, all from 1959, needed to be considered as hazardous waste and would have to be confiscated and crushed within 30 days. Now, those three cars were a 1959 Dodge Coronet, a 1959 Buick Le Sabre, and a 1959 Ford Galaxy. Jan did take legal action and he did eventually get all three vehicles back. Anne Dahlberg, county lawyer at the county administrative, said that the, they believed the condition of the cars showed that they weren't vintage vehicles. And this is the sort of nonsense that we're having to put up with. This is the kind of stupidity that goes around. Everybody gets terrified. Everybody gets worried. People start panicking. Now, this isn't scaremongering. This is me researching on the internet, finding the information with regards to automotive news that the mainstream media aren't reporting on when you should know about it, whether it happens or not, whether you believe it'll happen or not, you still need to know 
that this kind of stuff is out there and it's going on. Whether these are just proposals at the minute or not, whether they're actually put into force and they're coming into play or not, and whether or not you're sitting watching this thinking, well, that's Sweden, we're not even in the EU anymore. <laughs> you believe the government? Uh, look, anything could happen. If it gets in in Sweden, it might get in another part of the world, it might come over here and we might get lumbered with it as well. Oh, and if you haven't watched that last video I did about the survey over the day of LA, you need to.